Have you noticed collegiate athletes, especially when they have a platform and they play for a team that does get a lot of coverage, they're a little bit more outspoken in recent years. And I don't remember that being the case earlier on in my career. Um, why is that beneficial? It, it It's beneficial because at times it can look like, you know, that that sometimes your like teammates don't get involved or they're just like, yeah. they seem like they're just teammates and not really like family. And so I think having guys being able to speak out on the behalf of their, their teammates, it just really shows the bond and what's going on behind closed doors. Like my parents always wanted me to be a part of a team because it's something that's so special in that, you don't ever get a chance to have that feeling in anything else that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like a, a team dynamic is so beautiful, even in the ugly, because we all come from different backgrounds and like, I'm going to, I'm going to get really deep into it, especially nowadays where everything wants, everyone wants to see black and white. Everything seems like is we want to be unified, but you know, people talk about, you know, black people and white people if you really want to get deep into that moment that is a a white person stepping up for a black person mm -hmm. there yeah. is so many things in basketball and team sports where you have so many guys coming from different backgrounds and you have to come together for this one common goal i think that's what's so beautiful is that you have ugliness you have the beauty you have all of these different dynamics of people coming together and competing for one common goal so for Cormac Ryan to step up in that moment and say that about his teammate that's what that's the family dynamic that's the team dynamic and I think that's what was so beautiful about that moment um and that that might have been overlooked in that moment about the white and black but that's that's what team is about different backgrounds coming together for one common goal why is it important for you to make sure that that message is is spoken about? Because I can't relate, obviously. Um, so when you when you talk about the message and you say it's him sticking up for a black man, why is that an important message for you to talk about? It's important because that's that's what's that's a hot topic today. Mm -hmm. um, we're so e we're we're so quick to put out the negative that we don't see the positive in, 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 you know, and we're not quick to put that out there. And the reason why I pointed out is because I was impacted. I went to, I went from middle school to high school and my parents put me in that environment of a predominantly white uh, private school because my parents told me it's not about color. It's about the people that you're around. And they wanted me to feel comfortable being around other people that look different than me. Mm -hmm. And I to this day, my best friends are white guys. And I still talk to them to this day. And that is so important to talk about because we hear about all the negativity with whites and blacks. But we, we rarely ever hear about it being the opposite way. Mm. And I just my parents, that was part of them wanting to be me for me to be well-rounded. So I think that's why it's so important for that message to be put out there that it's it, it's not about the skin color. It's a, just about getting to know the person that's sitting across from you and like you and I right now having these conversations and being able to get to know one another. That's what it's about. And that will that will take down the barrier from seeing it as white and black. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. Um, <laughs> it's all good. No, but like, so, but how, how do I, how do I flip the narrative? And I don't want to flip a narrative where I'm being irresponsible or naive about it. Um, I can be very privileged in my everyday. I admit that. Um, I feel like even as a woman in my industry, I don't feel like I'm heard enough either. Um, so how, how do I make it to where I'm flipping the narrative without making it so like pick me? But see, that's the thing is, and, and that's the beauty in it is that you do, you do recognize and accept that you did come from privilege. That's fine. That's, that's not a problem. And people think that it's a problem that you come from that environment. It's not. 
but at the same time, you feel, you have this this dynamic that you don't feel like you're heard enough. Mm -hmm. So what I tell people is that we all have our we all have our differences. And I talk to folks, I talk to people who are uh, who are white, who have come from hard backgrounds. But the thing is, is we have to we have to take down the barrier and sit down and get to know people like that's yeah. how I was, that's how I was able to know the people that I like. I went into my situation thinking that like I had to be in a shell when I went into my high school. But once wow. I sat down and I got to know these people, I realized like. They have problems in their own right. We all mm -hmm. have our own problems. Yeah. But it's about the way that you approach the situation. But it's also about sitting down and having conversations with people. And once you realize, like, hey, that's just another person and they have problems, too. You're like, oh, my gosh, this is so beautiful because we all have our own things that make us who we are. Yeah. And I, and I feel like I feel like and I'm glad you mentioned, like, everything doesn't have to be black or white. Like, I'm such a gray thinker that I don't I wish I was more like. I have to be this and that I wish sometimes I could just be yes or no or a and B, but my yeah. mind just goes to all these crazy places. And I like, <laughs> you know, thinker hurts me sometimes, but with these podcasts, I love leaving, like learning something or having a beautiful, bigger view on things because you're right. We're all kind of dealing with stuff more than just kind of, we are all dealing with stuff. And I feel like that's, and it's, it's something we don't think about covering sports. It's just like, and I've talked about it before. We really just want to shut up and dribble mentality. And that's not okay. <laughs> and and I and I work with people who have that mentality when I'm covering a sport. And it drives me absolutely insane. And I've I just can't. 